Hi everybody, it's October 27, 2017. I want to make uh, some comments about an informal discussion on the California fires between Andrew Johnson and Judy Wood. 30 minutes. 30 minutes long of both of them not, not discussing the substance of the work that people have done posting videos on the California fires and questioning whether or not directed energy weapons were used. Instead, they spent 30 minutes laughing, calling them stupid, and an awful lot of other things which you will hear. I am not going to play any of the video because I would not doubt that I would get a copyright strike. They disabled comments underneath the video, and as far as I'm concerned, when you start calling people stupid, especially when you are of the stature of Judy Wood, um, you can't expect to uh, just not get anybody to respond to 30 minutes of that. No. And uh, they also were discussing in Truth by Grace's work Though I don't think that they mentioned her name, certainly not her real name, but I don't even think that they mentioned her channel name. But it's clear that they were talking about In Truth by Grace. And I, you can be a friend of mine, or I can respect you and not have even met you, but if you are going to be discussed in a manner that is not truthful, then I will. I can't not come to your defense. Whether you want it or not, I, there's something in me that compels me to uh, speak out for people who have been clearly maligned by others when, it, the, when it's clearly not deserved at all. Now, if you are a friend of mine or somebody that I respect and have never met and somebody criticizes you and the criticism is deserved, then I'm not going to come to your defense. So I am not about personality. I am about truth. And unfortunately, there are an awful lot of people who believe that they're about truth, but they're still at a low level of consciousness, driven by their ego, protecting their ego, and a lot of other people who protect the personality over truth. And until they raise their consciousness, they will continue to do that. That's just the way it goes. So if you're not understanding what I'm talking about, then you're really um, probably at a low level of consciousness and you haven't done enough work to raise your consciousness, to see the difference between being at that low level of consciousness and being at another level of consciousness. Uh, and the difference is quite startling, actually. Um, but let me just... What they said. For those who are, and that includes me, who are posting videos on the California fires, questioning whether or not directed energy weapons were used, we are demonstrating how stupid we are. We are... Um, we are bizarre uh, because we're calling some of the anomalies weird. We need to see weirdness. She asks incredulously, why do people need to feel like it was a weird fire? Apparently, according to Judy Wood, we have a subconscious need to validate the reuse of directed energy weapons the reuse. Uh, does that mean that directed energy weapons were only used on 9-11 and now we feel the need to reuse them? Directed energy weapons are used 24-7 against all of us. Many of us are actually suffering the consequences of those directed energy weapons coming from Gwen Towers, uh, cell towers, smart meters, Wi-Fi, Directed energy weapons are used in weather modification. So I don't know what she's talking about there. 
Uh, much of what she said, I don't even know how to respond to it because it clearly, uh, the things that she said, much of it didn't make any sense. She goes on to say, there is in some a need to see those weapons used again. Or they're triggered, they're trigger happy and want to be the first to post videos. Or someone is motivating them to spread disinformation and turn people's brains into salt and pepper. Uh, that's her term, I don't get it, but to make people not be able to tell the difference between reality and myth. Okay. Um, I'd like one person to point out how anybody has done that who has posted on these California fires and have questioned. You know, questioning apparently to Judy Wood is you can't do that, I guess. Um, which is bizarre because she's a professor and uh, I wouldn't want to be her student because dare I question something that I'd be called stupid. Um, but the reality of myth, the reality is that the California fires, there is evidence that those fires were strange, how they started, m so many starting essentially at the same time. Many on the ground living there have commented and said that they saw blue flashes or sparks in the sky, and then the fires start. Many have claimed that there was no wind, and suddenly there were gusts. And even in that interview, Andrew Johnson mentions that they may have used directed energy weapons. He doesn't say that verbatim, but that's what he is insinuating. Maybe they tweaked the winds to fan the flames. So he's essentially saying, that they could have used directed energy weapons to get those winds as high as they were, like 50 miles per hour, to fan the flames. But for some reason, we questioning directed energy weapons being used were stupid. All right. Uh, they contradicted themselves. Um, but they did mention In Truth by Grace. And they don't come out and say the name. Andrew Johnson, he talks of uh, In Truth by Grace's work on the temperatures and the heat, and she, in the video, uh, going through the temperature that is necessary to melt certain metals and glass. I will link below to all of the videos, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the videos. And he essentially said that he thought that that was good work of In Truth by Grace. But, oh well, she called Judy Wood, Judy Woods. Do you know how often I've said Judy Woods? Um, yeah, the adding of the S. Well, according to Andrew and Judy, if you can't get that detail right, then how am I to have any confidence in any of the details that you speak? Okay, um, so, because In Truth by Grace said Judy Woods, instead of Judy Wood, adding that S, wow, In Truth by Grace, what a mistake you made, huh? They dismiss, they discredit, they disqualify the substance of her work. And they even went to another example, a video posted by somebody who made the mistake of saying once, direct energy. He failed to put on the ED. But then Judy Wood said, but then he said directed energy. But again, they come back and say, but if you can't speak properly, if you can't um, get those details right, mispronouncing a word, adding an S to somebody's name, if you can't get those details right, then well, you're just stupid, and the substance of your work, as opposed to that nonsense, um, that's enough to discredit all of your work. It doesn't make any sense.
And a lot of people, yeah, they do give uh, an awful lot of credit to people who have degrees, to people who are called professors, to people who are uh, introduced as Dr. Judy Wood, uh, thinking that they're brilliant. They could be brilliant in their field but they could be really stupid in all other aspects. And I'm saying that from life experience. Um, there's a lot of people who think that I'm smart because I went to law school. I will tell you that law school allowed me to better my critical thinking skills better than when I first arrived in law school. But that's essentially you know, what law school did for me. And there are an awful lot of people who have not graduated high school, who have graduated high school but didn't go on to college, who are very smart, who can research, who can critically think, and who can post videos on very important subjects and speak quite eloquently about those subjects. So you don't need a degree, and you don't need to be called a professor, or a doctor um, to speak on certain subjects. Judy Wood is not the queen of directed energy weapons. A lot of us have done a tremendous amount of research on directed energy weapons. And to, to claim that we can't now, we can't now look at the pictures of the cars in the California park fire and recognize the similarities between those cars and the cars in 9-11 and then question whether or not directed energy weapons were used. We can't do that, Judy Wood. We're stupid for doing that. Okay. Um, and she can't see the very clear similarities, but she claims herself to have observational skills that are at the top well, I think I have pretty good observational skills. I think In Truth by Grace has very good observational skills. I think an awful lot of people have very good observational skills. And they've posted videos on what they have observed with those fires. So to claim that uh, they're stupid, they're gullible, um, all of the things that they were saying. It's really, I'm sorry, uh, I don't like doing this, but it needs to be done. Because somebody of Judy Wood's stature, when she's saying these things, there are an awful lot of people who don't listen, who hear things that somebody says, but they're not critically listening. They don't analyze what the person says. They just think that, oh, it's Judy Wood, she's a professor. And, well, a lot of people have said that she's brilliant. So therefore, I can just listen to this and say she's right without really listening to what she is saying. And that's unfortunate. A lot of people do it with people with degrees. You've got to listen carefully to everything that they say because they can say things that are meaningless. They can say things that are so absurd that it becomes laughable. They can say things that are utterly unfounded and stupid, but they get away with it because they have degrees. And unless you listen critically, unless you really listen, then you're listening to something that could actually be dangerous. You know, it's like listening to a doctor about vaccines. Oh, he's a doctor, he knows. Really. Uh, doctors have certainly shown us that they can be dangerously stupid, ignorant, um, and unfortunately, arrogant, arrogantly so. So when people have that kind of arrogance, it's intimidating. And other people kind of shy away from that and feel ashamed. Uh, I get angry. So 
Yes, the other things. We don't know how to diagnose a problem, according to Judy Wood. You start with the evidence. Well, that's what everybody was doing in their videos. Uh, it, it, <laughs> observing and analyzing the pictures and the film footage of the fires, just like you did, Judy, with 9-11. Uh, but the whole attack on In Truth by Grace to claim that, you know, well, she said Judy Woods instead of Judy Wood uh, doesn't give us much confidence. Uh, you want to talk about a non sequitur argument completely irrelevant to the substance of the work. Produced by, in truth, by Grace. But then they go on to beef up Judy Woods' ego. Um, yeah, she claiming that she is uh, has observational skills that are at the top, better than everybody else. Um, she knows the importance of not putting out questionable guesses. Uh... And I guess that means wrong guesses, and if not, um, well, we all start with, you know, just observing and um, what we are seeing, and when we see very obvious anomalies, we question that. So, I, it's really, Judy Wood had no direct knowledge of what was going on during 9-11. She's not an insider. She doesn't know exactly what directed energy weapons were used. Um, she observed, she analyzed, she did an awful lot more work, but she came up with a theory. Directed energy weapons were used. But you can't use the word theory with Judy Wood for some reason. Um, she's, it's evidence. Okay, well, Based on the evidence, you then presented a theory. Directed energy weapons were used. Um, well, that's what people were doing with their videos on directed uh, on the California fires. So, um, I also have to say, all right, I've met Judy Wood. I know a friend of hers. When I met her, I asked her about Richard Gage's work and he was a controlled opposition uh, psyop. Um, and essentially, I got the feeling like there's no discussion on that. All right. I, and I didn't go further with any discussion. I did talk to her friend several times, trying to open her mind to the possibility that both occurred, a controlled demolition and directed energy weapons were used to bring down the towers, all of the buildings, and uh, for some reason that idea doesn't seem to um, want to even be entertained in a lot of people's minds. The possibility does exist. There's evidence that they did uh, also use a controlled demolition. A lot of people heard bombs. Um, prior to 9-11, uh, security was replaced with another security outfit. People who worked late in the World Trade Centers heard um, work going on in the elevator shaft. So they could have been setting it up for a controlled demolition, but they could have also used directed energy weapons. So to say that one person is right, you know, Richard Gage claims that Judy Wood is crazy. Judy Wood claims that he's controlled opposition. What's the controlled opposition? Well, according to George, Judy Wood, if an American decides to question the official story, um, Richard Gage is there to present the controlled demolition story so that they never look at directed energy weapons. That doesn't make any sense to me, because if you have an American who's actually willing to question the official story and to do some research, then their mind is opening. And if their mind is opening to look in opposition to the official narrative, 
then how is Richard Gage controlled opposition? Because controlled opposition wants people to not look outside the official narrative. So even if they are thinking, oh wow, look at this work, Richard Gage controlled demolition, if they get that far, one would hope that they think, well, controlled demolition, who could have done that? So, um, Richard Gage won't accept directed energy weapons, Judy Wood won't accept controlled demolition, and they just fight with one another. Um, so, you know, and when I point that out, I get attacked. I mean, this is ridiculous. It is so low. It's so profoundly um, stupid. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So they also go on to talk about Wood, her published peer-reviewed papers, uh, her observational skills, and Johnson says, people can't experience Wood's level of thinking until they have looked at the real world problem and really studied it and know the importance of getting it right. All right. Um, so we can't post any videos until until we study world problems. Okay, the problem, the California fires. Uh, they also claimed that you would have to study, apparently for years, forest fires, lots of them, before we can even speak on what was obvious. These fires leaping over trees and bushes and grass and, and even parking lots. They, uh, surrounding, destroyed structures and everything in the structures. And how did that fire just leap over all of it and not touch? the trees and the leaves. And according to Judy Wood, that was because the trees are green. Now she doesn't incorporate um, the other very big factors, which is the geoengineering, the chemtrails, the dumping of massive chemicals and heavy metals, especially in that area, the drought for years um, that have so sickened the trees and dried them out. She claims that they're green so the fires didn't burn them. Or, well, a fire burns there and it doesn't burn here. Um, it didn't even get the leaves, Judy. There are some very obvious um, weirdness in that talk that, well, you can't not speculate like, what the hell is going on with Judy Wood? That she can't see these anomalies that are very clear and obvious. And she's not questioning them. No. Uh, so Wood responds, people don't know how to discern if something is stupid or not stupid. That's us. It's sickening, kind of, she says. Why didn't she, she's kind of mimicking somebody who posted a video, and it could have been in Truth by Grace. Why didn't trees and leaves burn or catch fire? According to Wood, they weren't in the fire. Now, because the fire leaped over the trees and the bushes and the, and the, and the grass to burn down structures. People who say it looked weird, well, maybe to the untrained eye. We need more training. So in our life experience, well, we can't talk about very bizarre things that happen in a fire that are very, very obvious to, well, many people, because so many people have been posting on those fires. Well, but we're stupid and I guess um, we can't discern properly, and we just want to believe that the fire looked weird. 
She found it upsetting that there are so many of us who are gullible and just jump on a bandwagon to see who can put out the fastest video. We are developing a bad name for conspiracy theorists as if they have a good name. And Johnson says something about, well, how people need to be there to get the full range of evidence. And many people there are posting videos on it. The most bizarre was when she said, how do you destroy a country? Rumors without checking the facts. I mean, all of this is like an analogy to our videos questioning whether directed energy weapons were used. Rumors without checking the facts. She said gossip starts and pretty soon someone will get an axe and go kill someone. That's how you destroy a country. Actually, you can destroy a country with directed energy weapons, but um, if you haven't studied the problem, you're just storytelling. So we were just storytelling. Look at how look at how the fire abruptly stops here. You know, she she tries to mimic somebody else in a video. Look at how the fire abruptly stops here. I think in my book they were reading about the dust abruptly stopping. Now that is weird, she says, but fire isn't like that. She contradicts herself because in her presentations she talks about fire abruptly stopping and how fires don't do that, they lap around. But now she's claiming that fires do abruptly stop. If you have a burning log in your fireplace and you douse it with water, well half the log will be burned and half won't. These are, th th this is the argument. Now let's listen to a few minutes of Judy Wood talking about the cars. The toasted cars, we gotta get to the toasted cars. I say they're toast, they're history. I can't say they're burnt because I don't know that. But they're toast. I just decided to use that word to say something happened, messed them up. You can't fix it, you gotta get a new one. This is history. This is a police car found on FDR Drive. I don't know how it got to, I don't know where it was toasted. There were some that were witnessed as being toasted on FDR Drive. But this one is quite interesting in that it uh, has an abrupt, you know, toasted, not toasted. Like it's, it's like it's on the showroom floor. It just had a new wax job back there. What abruptly stops a real fire, a regular fire, doesn't do that. It would be lapping around the corner. Also, why aren't the lights melted? The fire would be lapping around the corner. But in uh, response to the person who posted a video and uh, they claiming that the, how is it that the fire just abruptly stopped there, she then thinks that that person's referring to what she wrote in her book about the dust abruptly stopping. And she thinks that that's weird, but fires abruptly stopping. Now she's claiming that that's not weird. You said you saw melted tour buses, melted cars. The cars that were right down there, it was just unbelievable. They were twisted and melted into nothing. The build, the debris is just unbelievable. And then you can see fire trucks and police vehicles that were down there early, that um, all their windows, the windshield are completely blown out from, must have been from when debris dropped. But even more jarring, I think, uh, is this scene right here. Look at these two cars placed on top of one another. I think when you, when you think about the impact that uh, these planes must have had, it's hard to, to visualize what to say. Um, it, because everything melted. But here, at least you have some remnants. You have literally an engine uh, that is melded together with other parts of the car. Moving over, you've got another car they moved here. It looks like it's been through a war. Uh, you can see uh, the papers, all the, uh, the burned out papers from the building. <laughs> You see the soot and the dirt, and it just shows you 
how devastating this blast was. Look across the street there. Uh, you've got a Con Ed uh, truck that, you know, some of the Con Ed people now looking at, examining, trying to figure out uh, which truck that actually was. But that truck, too, uh, in terrible shape. Uh, so, well, many of the uh, items, the steel, uh, was literally melted. People who have been right down next to the base of what was the trade towers say there's virtually nothing. I'll, we'll stop here on this uh, toasted bus picture. You realize there's no burnt marks, no no scorch marks, the toasted bus. But yeah, these poor reporters, they're doing the best they can. <laughs> Remember, the evidence is the truth that a theory must mimic if the theory is correct. Starting out with a theory, uh, if you haven't figured out what happened first, you're just solving an imagined problem, not a real problem. So it's so important to look at the evidence. As we've seen, the evidence is showing us a different story than what we were led to believe. Now, this. Uh, toasted bus. Notice there's no big flame marks running right up inside the bus. No scorch marks. This oh. <clears throat> and then we have also uh, this vehicle that's already rusted. You can see Building 7 is still standing. Every car up this road was toasted in some way. Every vehicle. I call this the swamp. I think you can see why. Is it this happened? No door handles. Yeah. Not a trace of uh, window glass. All right, so she claims in the interview that she looked at pictures of the cars in the California fire and saw jagged glass in every car that I have looked at there are, there's no jagged pieces of the glass completely gone is the glass from the cars gone and she uses the uh, the analogy as if they were sandblasted these cars and say that that there's absolutely no glass whatsoever so where is the jagged glass that Judy Wood claims to have seen in these cars so that's just one similarity that she dismisses uh, <laughs> More debris falling from a nearby building to the World Trade Center. We're at West Broadway of Barclay. Very difficult to breathe here, but look around. This must have been ground zero where this thing blew up. Car after car after car. Buses completely obliterated and burned straight down to the steel. Behind me. Uh, he was describing it the best he could. Here's more of that street. And notice no door handles. Now that in itself isn't surprising, but we're just noticing the patterns. All right, so notice the patterns on the cars. No door handles. No door handles. Glass completely gone. No door handles. It seems that door latches, you know, trunk lid latch, this door, uh, trunk, door latches and door handles were, were completely gone. Also, this looks like uh, it was sandblasted ready for a new paint job. Not a, a trace of window glass left. Not a trace of window glass left. And as you can see, of all of the cars that I have seen, and listen to this man, what he has to say about the uh, glass. This is Dam, Damx, Damxx, I don't know. All right. Santa Rosa, California. This is Coffee Park. I found this video on the internet. Someone did a drive through and took a nice video for me to analyze. We're going to start with this car right here. All right. Now, every car 
in this park is destroyed in exactly the same way. All right. In Toasted. Sides are completely destroyed. All the glass just disappeared. And the outside of the car looks like it was sandblasted. So these people are stupid for posting their videos, Judy? Really? Let's go on. Matt. And that's what seems to be a trend with the toasted vehicles. Something happens to the engine compartment too, like this one down here. And notice again this uh, distinct abrupt line between different parts of the car. Now, often folks say, well, it's just like any old burnt car. Here are burnt cars up at the top. Notice these rings of bird marks around it. I don't actually see the rings, so mm, do you? And burnt cars also have remains of window glass. This is clean down here. And here we have traces of window glass left. And of course, there's a lot left there. But the ones at 9-11, there's not a trace. The ones who are, that are seriously toasted. Doesn't look at all. These are uniform color, like they've been sandblasted, ready for a new paint job. And the insides are completely toasted. I think they threw this stuff in afterwards. She thinks that they threw this stuff in afterwards. So she is making... Uh, this speculation without any evidence who and who is they so she's claiming that this was uh, hit with directed energy weapons and that they threw this stuff in to cover for energy weapons why didn't they throw it in every car but as you'll notice the cars during the California fires or after the fires are evidencing that they are completely toasted, that they have nothing inside them as well. I do want to bring your attention again to the tossed over car on 9-11 and the similarities to the uh, California fires with their tossed cars. This was not the only one there were several pictures of tossed cars right on their head. How does that happen from a forest fire? Yes, they had some high winds, but not high enough to literally flip cars. And many of the cars really have so many similar characteristics to the 9-11 cars that uh, Judy Wood is presenting in her talks. No glass, no handles, and yes, the, the coloring of the so-called burnt cars is very similar to the California cars. So, I honestly don't know how anybody in their right mind could claim that there's no similarities. I mean, look at this car, look at this car with the gray and the yellow, and you look at this car, I guess Judy Wood claiming that there's no scorch marks on these cars? Well, no. One could claim that this is the black around, you know, the rim of the tire. Um, but this yellow and this gray, uh, there's this car, sorry, yellow and the gray, this car, well, somehow this got ignited without having any fire around it. It looks like there's no fire that leaped over the road. This just ignited spontaneous combustion, which is a term that Judy Wood 
uses in her presentations on directed energy weapons being used on 9-11. No fire behind it. It doesn't look like any fire traveled up the road. No fire on the uh, right-hand side of it, but it just ignited on its own. And it has very similar coloring to some of these cars in her talk and in her book. I, I don't, I, I honestly am really quite shocked at, at that talk. Because what they are saying, they are so clearly wrong. It, it could not be more obvious. But to claim that the fire didn't burn the trees because they're green, when we know that they are dried out because of the geoengineering, the drought, yes, they got some rain this year, but certainly not enough to, for these trees to accumulate enough moisture to have somehow been left so untouched, and yet McDonald's and Arby's is completely destroyed. The parking lot looks pristine. So somehow these fires snuck in around the trees and ignited the buildings, both buildings, and left everything else untouched. Right. And we need to see weirdness, Judy? We need to see it? Or is it very plain on its face, right smack in front of us? And here is another uh, building. This is Arby's. Okay, well, trees on this side, trees on this side. Uh, the grass here, everything pristine, except for a few ashes in the parking lot. So I guess this fire snuck into this parking lot and ignited these buildings, but nothing else. Nothing else. How did it get in? with all of the trees surrounding the entire, I think this is a shopping mall, leaving untouched everything. Well, that's quite the fire. But for anybody to claim that that's natural, I'm sorry, they are not in their right mind. But we have seen many homes and buildings and neighborhoods exactly the same. The homes gone, the surrounding trees untouched. But yeah, we're stupid. We're stupid. Look at this. We're stupid. These buildings, somehow, they were dustified but the trees that look rather dry left untouched. I want you to hear one more um, bit of this. Now this is an interesting picture. Often we were shown this by uh, certain individuals who would say, see molten metal. But wait a minute, what's really going on here? This is a, an igloo cooler and a trash can that aren't melted. Okay, Still and I, I do... Would you believe it? I want to point out that in Truth by Grace... That is completely fried in all these houses, and there's a recycling bin that did not melt. A car that is completely fried in all these houses, and there's a recycling bin that did not melt. Okay. Um, sorry for the mistakes, but... Yeah, she's pointing out exactly what Judy Wood is pointing out. The only difference is that Judy Wood is pointing out a igloo container, a cooler, and a 
trash can that didn't burn. And here is In Truth by Grace pointing out that these recycling bins, which are plastic, they didn't melt, but everything around it is gone. In Truth by Grace is stupid. We're all stupid for pointing out these anomalies. This is outrageous. It, yeah, I, I don't understand how, how it is that Judy Wood and Andrew Johnson can be dismissing all of this. I don't, I don't even know how to end this. You know, I want to make sense of that talk between Judy and Andrew, but the only sense that I can make of it is that you can have adults who are brilliant in, in um, specific areas, but they are very undeveloped and immature. And that 30-minute video revealed how immature they are. It's, it's not anything that I can reconcile with intelligent, mature people. Not anything that I can reconcile with people who have a, a, a high consciousness. This kind of behavior is really disgraceful. And as far as I'm concerned, Judy Wood and Andrew Johnson owe all of those who have posted videos on the California fires questioning whether or not directed energy weapons were used, they owe them an apology. To call people stupid, to claim that they're gullible, to claim that they might be motivated by somebody to put out disinformation, when what we have been pointing out are all of the similarities to that which Judy Wood points out in her presentations about 9-11 and in her book. It's clear, uh, the anomalies were obvious, but no, we're stupid. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just filled with this incomprehensibility that people feel that they can say whatever the hell that they want to say and think that, well, they think that nobody's going to question them. They think that nobody's going to respond. Clearly, comments disabled. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm puzzled, <laughs> to say the least, that people can actually behave the way they do and think that it's perfectly fine. Well, it's not. It's not. For Judy Wood to psychoanalyze us, thinking that we have this need to see weirdness, we have a need to have directed energy weapons reused. What? That's utterly insane. And the one who needs to be psychoanalyzed is Judy Wood. I wish that I could make sense. I want to make sense of what I hear. I will tell you that more and more do I hear the most absurd, inane, insane, crazy-making, maddening things come out of the mouths of those that I've always thought, or who I always thought, were intelligent. And when you do question them, they do end up attacking. It's like they can't, they're so separated from what they are saying, like they can't even hear it. And I do often wonder, are they using directed energy weapons against people like Judy Wood? That she could actually have this guy, Andrew Johnson, post a video so demeaning of others and their claims are utterly baseless, not grounded in anything. They argue against what we have been doing, posting these videos for 30 minutes, but they never go to the substance within those videos. They make 
these seventh grade attacks, personal attacks. Who does this but somebody who is clearly not a very developed, mature human being? And that's the problem that we do face. The low consciousness of an awful lot of Americans who refuse to do any personal work on themselves to raise their consciousness so they can get out of that ego-driven consciousness that just continually um, leads them to defend their ego by attacking other people But this thing, for anybody to claim that there are not similarities between what Judy Wood is presenting and the California fires is not in their right mind. I'm sorry. And Judy Wood is upset that her name is being brought up in many of the videos, I guess. She feels that we are discrediting her. Judy Wood, let me just tell you, you discredited yourself in that 30-minute talk with Andrew. And it's really a shame that you had that talk and published that talk and didn't think about what you were doing by publishing it. And anybody to expect that having listened to it, people weren't going to respond. <laughs> well, that's also somebody not in their right mind. I wish that I could make sense of this. I'm kind of hanging on with like, try, try, try to make sense. I can't make sense. So all I'm going to say is the links to everything is below and I hope that you all have a good weekend.